morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is feeling, allowing ourselves to feel the feelings that we have in order that we may process them through before moving on rather than denying, avoiding, suppressing, all of that good stuff. So it uh, should be an interesting conversation. And before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together Vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the pressure, the temperature, the motion, the tickling and tingling when you stop. And allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Rosalind. Great to have you here with us this morning. Great to have all of you joining us. So we're talking about feeling, feeling your feelings, not wallowing. We're not talking about wallowing, but feeling your feelings, being present to your feelings, exploring uh, what the sensation of those feelings is, where it might be located in your body what the what the edges of it are are feeling like to be able to actually experience the feelings without necessarily making a story about it so if we could just imagine that these feelings are energy emotion energy in motion then we can take a less judgmental or non-judgmental approach to them and then allow the energy to process through. If we don't, or when we don't, and we don't always have the opportunity to do it right when those feelings are happening. We might be in, the, in, the, in a situation that just does not allow for that kind of exploration, but it's important that we go back to discover what is going on and to allow ourselves to move that through. Otherwise, that energy just deepens and festers over time. And um, I have had so many experiences for myself and also with clients where emotions from decades and decades ago are getting unlocked in in some of the session work that we do and that that energy which is it is stored energy that energy has been being suppressed for years and years and years and has impacted so many aspects of their lives as a result of not having been addressed, not having been processed. So there's a distinction between feeling your feelings, being present to your feelings with curiosity and wallowing in your feelings. <clears throat> um, one of the ways that we end up wallowing is by creating stories around these feelings and we go in a loop. I remember 
actually being able to see myself in this loop that I was having a real hard time getting out of at one point uh, where I just was obsessing over the story, the emotion. I'd feel the emotion. I'd go back into the story about it. I'd go back into justification, justifying myself, villainizing others, um, villainizing myself, just going in this loop that was trying to figure out the dynamics and what was going on and the thing is that we're when we're in the throes of those emotions we're not in a place to be able to see the bigger picture we're not in a place to be able to really discern what's going on because we can't really distinguish between what's me and my reaction and what's actually going on because the whole situation is interpreted from our own lens that is tainted by our reactivity, right? So most often the emotions that we experience are when, when we get really triggered, most often those triggers are from the past. Most often the emotional reaction that we're having isn't re, isn't in proportion it, or is out of proportion with whatever it is that's happening now. And in fact, it's just bringing up stuff from, from the past and we don't even recognize it. And that's one of the, so that's the stuck emotion from the past, some stuck circumstance that was never processed through. And we tend to want to process things through intellectually, figure it out, make sense of it. The thing is that emotions are, it's a different realm. It's not rational. And so we can't, convince ourselves logically to feel differently we need to have sort of an experiential shift that that transforms those emotions sometimes we can activate that shift through language through conceptualization um often through something that we call a reframe where we allow ourselves to think differently. And as a result, we feel differently. Rosalind says like scar tissue, healing a layer of skin that is desensitized, void of feeling to the touch ways to penetrate that layer of protection. <clears throat> and that's such a good example Rosalind. So um, scar tissue being desensitized, void of feeling. So we, we do create these emotional scars. I, I'm, I'm wanting to think of a cyst, actually, because it's like the, it, it just creates this formation almost under the skin that, that can get it can erupt at um, any given time uh, in, in very unpredictable ways. Um, so we get, to, we get to look at the emotions, hopefully when we experience them. Like if you notice that you're <coughs> having a, a pretty intense reaction to something, get curious don't it's not about judging yourself for the reactivity i mean sometimes we get reactive and we have stuff to clean up with other people as a result afterwards and that's okay uh, we're not looking to judge ourselves for our reactions we're looking to explore them and find a space of understanding and um compassion and healing 
the the intention is not to just forgive bad behavior kind of thing give a give ourselves a pass the idea is to find clarity to grow to become free of those limiting constraints of um reactivity right to become free that's this is this is the intention as far as i can tell at least for me anyway the intention of the spiritual awakening path the path of of um awakening is a path toward freedom toward fullest expression of our essential being of our greater potentials and we spoke about some of the seemingly magical potentials available to us the other day and the thing that gives us access to those is but is the freeing of ourselves from the limitations of our beliefs about how the world is and so these emotional triggers, these reactions that we have um, are that are often sourced in our childhoods through a variety of traumas and um, challenges and also enculturation within our families, within our cultures, these, these um, triggers and beliefs and ideas, if we can approach them with curiosity and feel into them, if we can cultivate our emotional intelligence, I think that that's a big part of this whole thing. That's really what we're talking about is cultivating our emotional intelligence to be able to um, find emotional discernment and awareness so that we don't need to be at the effect of our emotions so that we can allow our emotions to be our teachers very much as we learn from information gathering, we can be learning from the information that our body and being provides. In fact, another dimension of feeling is feeling physical sensations. So when we find ourselves in pain, we can be present to that pain. We can be even dialoguing with that pain and be curious about it. Uh, Louise Hay had has had multiple books. Um, I think I'm trying to remember the titles, uh, but she talked about how all these different ailments and um, conditions have a non-physical component to them, have an emotional component uh, or a symbolic component as far as uh, maybe loss or anger or uh, insecurity or any, that there were meanings attributed to all these different conditions, physical conditions that give us greater insight that these emotions, when we don't process them through, when we don't allow ourselves to engage in our healing process, the energy from suppressed emotion shows up in physical conditions, in physical manifestations. 
So when we've endured a situation long enough, when we've shouldered a burden long enough, we get issues going on in our shoulders potentially. So that kind of example, uh, I don't know if it was called You Can Heal Your Life, maybe. It may be the title, I'm not certain. Anyway, uh, it's important and this is a shift of paradigm culturally, too, because um, for the large part, in the large part, we have been culturally conditioned to press on, ignore the feelings, just do it, just push through. And while that might be an important capability to harness in certain situations, on a temporary uh, scale, if we just keep pushing through and we never address what's going on, it's gonna come back like a tidal wave at some point and, and engulf us. And I've seen that too, where, I mean, this is a pretty typical scenario when in an emergency people rise to the emergency and are really capable really competent doing remarkable things to address this emergency and then when the emergency is over there's this incredible crash because there had been this surge of adrenaline and then afterwards there's just like nothing nothingness and it's an opportunity then for the nervous system to reset itself, but it often does that through collapse. And so that's why it's important to be as present as possible, again, with curiosity to moving through that energetic experience of of the stress, like to to be able to uh, let out the pressure in a pressure cooker, you know, so that it doesn't just build and build and build and build. We want to be able to let off steam, so to speak. It's really an important thing, and and one of the ways that we can do that is by giving ourselves. It's not like it has to take a, a lot of time, but we can give ourselves the opportunity to take a few minutes and feel into what's going on and oftentimes there will be tears and tears are one way that we release that energy and it's okay we don't have to judge it we don't have to say oh i'm just being weak or i'm being too fragile too sensitive these are these are culturally conditioned responses to um an inability to navigate our emotional nature. And there's so much intelligence in our emotions. So one of the things that I say in the context of the work that I do with my clients is, if it's coming up, it's coming up to heal. It's coming up to heal. And we can use the opportunity it's just energy. It's just energy. And we put all kinds of labels on it. And we put all kinds of judgments on it. And we're told that we're weak if we're too, emo we're too emotional and too sensitive. Like I, growing up, I was very, very sensitive. And, and my family would hide certain information from me because of my sensitivity and how I would react. And, and I don't know, I, maybe it was well-intentioned, well-intended, but I don't know that that was necessarily a positive thing. I think that what occurred for me is that I felt, um, that that was not a positive judgment 
uh, I had re I received that judgment uh, as a kid and and internalized it like there was something wrong with me because I was sensitive <clears throat> and I think that while it's difficult to navigate if you're sensitive there's there's a certain gift to that there's a certain attunement that is part of that that maybe steers us more to a deeper understanding of who we are in our essence <clears throat> one of the one of the things one of the ways that I support people in discovering what they're here for or, you know, to find a resonant direction or, or purpose is to be looking at what it was as kids that made them different. And maybe what they got teased for, maybe what they got condemned for, maybe what they got praised for. But to come back to our topic of feeling, there's so much wisdom and perspective that's available to us when we slow down enough to presence ourselves to what is really going on for us. So Rosalyn says, navigating to the part of the body where the unsettled energy is being held in the body. Exactly. So one of the practices of the core connection work is, what are you feeling? Where? What's the emotion? Where is it located in your body? What does it feel like? And oftentimes putting a uh, an image, a visual to that feeling like it feels like a big black slimy thick clot of tar for example is something that's not uncommon and then we interact with that we look to see is there any sound what do, what are the edges like does it have a temperature these are all nlp sort of um parameters you know to to be able to interact with this thing as if it's a material thing and then just observe and then notice well what changes as you're present to it you know is it moving is it changing in size or texture temperature does it have anything to say and when we're able to embody our feelings in that way, it allows us a way to interact with them and to heal them and to you know, oftentimes dissolve them, not denying them, because denying them doesn't really make them go away. It just, it just pushes them deeper like a splinter that just goes deeper and deeper and, and then gets infected and gets some kind of cyst around it. And, and then who knows how it's going to show up later. So being present to the part of the body where the feeling resides and then noticing it's just the power of the act of noticing is remarkable. Because just in what seems like a passive act of noticing, change happens just by presencing ourselves to it, acknowledging that's the sensation, not I'm angry and here's why I'm angry and I'm justifying being angry and I'm right and they're wrong and here's the whole story, not like that. But I feel anger. Where do I feel it? I feel it in my shoulders. What does it feel like? It feels like a burning poker. If you look at the burning poker, what do you notice about it? What do you notice about where it contacts your shoulder? 
et cetera, et cetera. And now what's changing? What's changing as you're present to it? Well, maybe the poker is not as fiery as it was. It's not as sharp as it was. And is it still anger? Well, maybe it's not anger now. Maybe it's disappointment. And so we go like that. And it's super, super powerful and super effective to just allowing what's there to be without having to change it. And when we allow what's the, there to be, it does change in and of itself because we're not resisting it. We're not denying it. We're not trying to exile it or dis disavow it. We're just being present to it. And as a result, it dissolves. It's remarkable. I've seen it thousands of times, literally thousands of times. So healing. That's it for today. Uh, Rosalind says, allowing is letting go of the, how is this going to work to make it go away? Exactly. Just the noticing and awareness with no judgment. And also if possible to release the desire to make it go away, to just be curious about it instead. So that's it for today. I'm Mira Rubin. This is the core connection. I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network and Enlightened World Living. And as always, it is such a privilege and pleasure to have the opportunity to spend this time with you and to explore ways of being, ways of seeing. And until next time, so much love to you.